Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Um, we're going to get back into the hash calculator here today. Um, I moved the camera and the uh, microphone around a little bit, trying to get a little better quality here. Still can't call it a studio by any means, but hopefully, um, hopefully it will turn out a little better quality of picture. A um, couple things I want to do before we dive into new code. Um, when I was watching this, the last video on this that I did, when I was watching it, I always have to watch them to make sure basically that the recording went okay. Um, I realized when I was watching it that I could improve quite a bit on a couple of the routines um, because of the way they changed as we worked on them. These that did the three, three increments followed by three decrements wasn't actually necessary because once we changed it to where we're passing in X um, as the index, we can just increment the the address that X is being in that X is being indexed by, or that X is the index beyond, um, and not have to do this increment X decrement X stuff. So if we just take those out and just change this to 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and then let x let x stay the same and let this say that we're doing four bytes next to each other. So that should that should simplify that one quite a bit. We can do the same thing here. Take out the three increments and the three decrements. Now that is going to let me put that back for a second. That is going to change something because here we're branching. Let's see. Yeah, we're branching on carry clear. Although the carry, well, no, that's right. The, the decrements don't affect the carry. That's right. So we don't have to. That's right, we figured that out last time. The, the, the carry flag is affected by this anyway, and the decrements weren't going to change that. So we'll take those out, and then we can just change this again to 1, 2, and 3. And then we just have to look at this. At this point, let's see. Let me, let me set this back to the way it was at the beginning. Make sure I get this right. Okay. We were incrementing it, so at this point it became 1, at this point 2, at this point 3, and then decrementing it back down. So when we got here, we were, let's see, and then if there was a carry, or if there was not a carry, we branched ahead to here, and then looped. Let's see, yeah. If there was a carry, then we went ahead and did it to zero. Okay, yeah, because we're adding that carry back to the very beginning of the first byte. So that's okay, these can stay zero because that's where we wanted to be at that point. We had decremented it three times back to zero. So that should fix that one up. And that just leaves us with this one, which we had, we had to add these three at the beginning because we wanted to start at the right end of the byte in this case since we're rolling left. And so here we're actually starting up at 3, coming down to 2, coming down to 1, and then to 0, and then incrementing it back up to 3, and so these would need to be 3. Okay, and then we can take out these increments, these decrements, and also these three increments at the beginning. Okay, I think that should work. We're going to test those, but um, I think that should work correctly. So, let's see, to test them, let's go ahead and do that before we move on. Let's load A with 1. Let's just keep this simple. Um, stored, stored that into the temp location. We, don't, we won't worry about the temp 2 location for right now. Um, Let's test this 
shift right by one. Let's test that first. Um, to do it, we pass the number of times in Y and the zero page address in X. So we need to load X with um, temp one, Y with, let's just shift it once. We don't care about A. And shift R in. Okay. We don't care about this temp2 stuff. We'll just ignore that for now. Um, okay. Let's assemble. And load it. Okay, that's going to be... Let's see. We go back to figure out what we expect here. We're loading A with 1. And... Um, storing that into temp1 and also the other the, we're going to put one into the four locations of temp1 then we're going to shift it all to the right so we should end up with the high bit set in each of the three locations the first one should end up zeroed out so what we should end up with is zero zero eight zero eight zero eight zero um, And if I remember right, where did we put them? Where is temp1? At 18, okay. Okay, it just left 010101. So I might be forgetting what, what it does. Let's see. I think I need to start working on these more often than once a week. My memory of them gets a little hazy, especially with another project going on. Um, I got that that right. Load Y with 1. Load X with the address temp1. And jump to the subroutine. Temp1 is 18. Yeah. So it is storing. It is doing the storing right. So something's not happening right here. We're shifting that, rotating that, branching back up to here. It seems straightforward enough. Um, did I load the... Did I load the thing that I need to load? It looks like I did. Zero one zero one zero one zero one. Yeah, it didn't it didn't rotate it yet, so why did it not rotate it? Well, let's set a breakpoint. And then let's run it. Stepping through. So we get to here, we should have um, yeah, we should have zero. We should have the ones. So we'll keep stepping. That's the temp two stuff we don't care about. Load y with so we loaded x with eighteen or one eight. Load y with one. Jump subroutine. Left shift. Or not left. Logical shift right. On zero zero comma x. So. Let's see what we got there. Um, what am I? What am I forgetting here? Oh, X got turned into one somehow. Why did that happen? Right here. Okay, we load X with. Oh, that's me being stupid. I think I do this once every every session, probably. Right here, I don't want to load X with the value stored at temp1. I want to load X with 
the value temp I want to load X with that address that's my problem otherwise I'm loading X with 1 because that's the value we stored at temp 1 I want to load X with the address of temp 1 um, and so I just want to load it with that value so that was my mistake there I think I do that once every session I was even looking for it too because uh, it's kind of the most obvious mistake but it still took a little while to catch it um, all right let's load the program here again yeah there we go it, it shifted it all one bit to the right zero zero eighty 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 all right let's do it with rotate right in now that should rotate it around so that we get 80, 80, 80, 80. All right. Assemble. There we go. 80, 80, 80, 80. And now if we do it, rotate it to the left. Assemble. We should get okay. So we've got one, 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 one. We shift everything left. We should get two, 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 zero, two, zero, two, zero, two, zero, two. There we go. All right. So they all work. I just wanted to check and make sure um, we managed to trim, you know, a dozen cycles out of each loop on all those routines by getting rid of that business. Um, all right. The other thing I wanted to do, according to my notes here is to document these 32-bit routines because now that there's several of them I'm already forgetting how to call each one because sometimes just depending on how the indexing works sometimes we need to put certain things in X or certain things in Y or certain things in the accumulator and they can't all be the same um, for reasons um, and that's going to continue to be the case so what I want to do is take these comments and this shouldn't take me very long and basically copy all the comments to the top so I don't have to hunt through looking for each one of these to um, to find out how to use them I want to be able to just look in one place so like this one is F copy Z Z F exclusive or because this is ba I mean basically I'm creating a header file here I'm just putting it at the top and maybe I will split it out into another file at some point um, in fact <laughs> now that I'm now that I mentioned that let's do that Let's just create another file. We'll call it 32bitlib.h like it's a C header C header file, even though that's not what it is. This is just this is just documentation, is what it is. It's just something I can refer to as I use these routines um, without having to look through here and scroll down and say, okay, here's shift shift right in, here's how it works. So real quickly do some copies and I think we got one more all right so there are all of our current 32-bit routines for doing things um, there will be more because we will eventually need an F copy from main memory to zero page and from zero page to main memory, probably one that does it within main memory. Um, we'll just, we'll add those as we come to them. Right, oops, what did I do? Okay. So that's our documentation for that.
Alright, so let's go back to our plan here then. So we've written, what we did then is we created all the inner utilities that we need to do these functions. We have an AND, we have a NOT, we have an exclusive OR, we have a rotate left, a rotate right, and a shift right. We have all the, the pieces that we need to start putting these functions together. So now we want to just, we want to start creating these functions. So let's take a look first of all at, at F1. That'll be the one we do first. Um, all right, and that's what we had, we had started putting that here. Um, okay. So what F1 does, let's go ahead and just copy this as a comment so we don't have to keep looking back here. What F1 does is it takes the value that's in A, and we'll talk about that in a second. It rotates it right twice. It exclusive ORs that. Then, well, then it takes A again, rotates it right 13 times, exclusive ORs that with the first one, and then it takes A again, rotates it left 10 times, and exclusive ORs that with the, with the result of those two. Now... Um, I'm pretty sure, and I guess I hadn't actually thought about this before, but I'm pretty sure it starts with the original A each time. It doesn't, um, hmm. you know, that's an interesting question. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let's find out for sure, though. I get this idea of originally from Rosetta Code, um, which is a site where you can do... Basically, there's a whole list of programming tasks that you can do in different programming languages. And depending on... Um, Depending on what language you're doing, someone else may have already done it. Um, I'm just going to take a look at the Perl solution for this. Um, yeah, like right, right here. I'm looking for the F. There's CH, there's major... But yeah, it's 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 using the same A each time, and I'm pretty sure. Let's see, this is right rotate. Here's F1. This is F1 done in Perl. And yeah, because right rotate, they're right rotate. Yeah. It's not clobbering A each time. That's basically what I was getting at. It's using, if A is 1, then A is 1 each of the three times. We come back here. You know, if this is 1, then it's going to rotate 1 twice. It's going to rotate 1 13 times. And it's going to rotate uh, 1 to the left 10 times. And then it's going to exclusive or all those together. So I just wanted to make, I, th I thought that was the case, but I wanted to make sure. All right. So the first thing we need to do then, because of our situation where we don't have 32-bit registers to copy any of this stuff into, we need to put things into memory locations. We need to copy the, the A value, that 4 bytes, into one of our temp locations where we can do this. Because we, we, can't, we can't rotate A where it's sitting, because we're going to need it again when we do the next rotate and the next rotate. So if we look at our documentation here then, we need to use fcopyzz to copy that to one of our temp locations. All right. So, um, first of all, then let's talk about where the A value is stored at the moment. Right now, I've got VA at 24. The first thing I want to do is reorder these things um, because 
there are eight values, which what are called working values, A through H. So I'm calling them VA through VH just because that's going to, I think that's going to make them a little easier to spot in the code. Um, just calling them A through H, the A through F ones could be mistaken for hexadecimal numbers, and so I, I don't want that. Um, so I want to put those first. Okay, and then we'll put the temps after them. Because there could be more temps, and I don't want to have I want to keep the temps together, so I want to I want to keep the I want to have the temps be last. Um, all right. So then these are the our working variables, working values, whatever the I forget exactly what they called them, but it was a V word. So that's where we're going to store our working variables, and then right after them will come our temps because I think we'll probably need more than three temps, but. We'll add those as we come to them. All right. So the first thing we need to do, like I said, is copy A, which is VA, in our in our nomenclature here. We're going to copy that to temp one. And so if we look at then at our header file, we need to put this zero page address of the source in Y, and the destination in A. So we're going to load A with VA and store that, or no, sorry, what did I say, memory so poor. Okay, put the zero page address of the source in Y. So we need to load Y with VA, that's the source. We need to load A with temp1, that's going to be the destination, and I believe we load x with the number of bytes, yes, the number of bytes in x, and then we call fcopyzz. Okay, so what we've done there is we've copied va, we've copied the value that's at va into temp1, into the location temp1. All right, so Let's just do that. Jump to subroutine F1. Okay. Um, and let's let's put this at VA. We don't care what's at temp one here because we're going to clobber it anyway. Um, so we want our we want our program here. We also don't care about this. We just want our program to copy this value from VA into temp1. So we'll see if it does that. Just do a little test here before we write any more code. Okay, so if we look then, we're going to go from 18 up to like 50. All right, we put... Or where's our, where's our VA? Okay, here's our VA at 38, I believe. Let's check the ink. Oh, good. No, that's right. VA is at 18 now, but temp1 is now up at 38. So let's check it. All right, so we, we created VA here at 66. That's there. And then fcopyzz copied that up to temp1 right here. So it worked. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Didn't really expect that to break, but... Um, all right, so once it's copied it there, then we need to rotate it. All right, so now we need to look at our documentation for rotate. And this is the stuff that, you know, after I've done this a uh, hundred times, it'll start to actually sink in. So we need to rotate the value at temp1 to the right n times. So we need to pass the number of times in y and the address in x. All right, so the number of times is in this case going to be 2. That's the first rotation right here. This one, we're working on this one right here, right now. <clears throat> and X, the location, is temp1. And so then we jump to subroutine, rotate right, in. All right, so now we've rotated that to the right twice, if we did that correctly. 
uh, times and y, address and x, looks good. All right, now we need to do, we need to copy VA into temp2. So let's do that. Let's load y again with VA, but load a with temp2. Load x again with four bytes and jump to subroutine f copy zz now we've copied it in attempt two let's let's be putting some um, if I like the assembler mode it doesn't automatically move over for me let's see um, there we go that's better I've, I've, tried a couple of different assembly modes and I'm not sure which one I like yet but okay so we're going to copy VA to temp1 so that did that then we're going to rotate right twice temp1 and then we're going to copy VA to temp2 okay so that's what we've done so far now we want to rotate temp2 13 times. So this time we're going to load y with 13, which is um, 0d in hexadecimal. Rotate r 13, temp2. So we're going to load x with temp2 and jump to subroutine, rotate right. In. All right. So now we have the value of a, the value a, the a variable, whatever we want to call it. We have it in temp one rotated to the right twice. We have it in temp two rotated to the right thirteen times. Now we want to exclusive or both of those and leave the result in temp one. So let's look at our exclusive or routine. F E or here. <clears throat> The zero page address of the first one goes in X, and the zero page address of the second one goes in A. So load X with the first one, temp one, exclusive or, and let's, temp one equals temp one, exclusive or, temp two. That's what we'll call it. Load A, did I say A? I did. That's the second address. Temp2. And jump subroutine F Eor. I keep thinking of Winnie the Pooh F Eor. Um, sounds like I'm telling Eor to F off. Um, okay, so we've exclusive. That will exclusive or those and it'll leave the result in Temp1. Now Temp2 is free again if we want to use it. So let's do that. Let's load then A again. Copy VA to temp2 again. Um, four bytes. Oop, got an LSR there, not a JSR. They should all be JSRs, all these jumps. Yep how that happened and jump to subroutine f copy zz all right so now we've copied va into temp2 and now we need to rotate it left 10 times so load y with the number of times that's going to be a in hexadecimal rotate left 10 temp 2 and then so that's the number of times the location is temp 2 jump subroutine rotate left n times and so now we need to exclusive or that again with temp 1 so I can just go right here grab this and that should do that and we should be left with the result of all this 
in temp1. All right, how can we test that? Well, let's put a simpler value. Let's just put a 1 in here. And let's not even, let's, let's put a 0 otherwise. Okay. So all we're going to have is 1 when this starts. All right, then let's think about what it's going to do. We're going to start, so we're going to start out with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. We're going to rotate that twice to the right. That's going to come around and make uh, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's going to be temp 1 after the first step. Um, then we're going to copy... Zero, 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 001 to temp 2 and rotate that right 13 times. Okay, so 8 times will bring it around to zero, 01 here, and then you've got 5 more times, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think. Uh, where's that going to put it? That's going to make the second bite here. I think that's going to make it zero 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 eight zero 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 zero. We can walk. We can walk all this. Well, actually, it'd be a long walk, but we can walk all the through all this in the um, monitor. But we'll see. Then, if we exclusive or those together, we're going to get. Let's see, four. Zero, zero, yeah, four zero zero eight zero 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 zero. That'll be our new temp one. And then we're going to copy the zero 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 one to temp two again. Rotate that left ten times. All right, eight times is going to bring it to here as a one, and then two more times to make it a four. So that's going to make this zero four. Zero, 0 and then exclusive oring that with the above should give us 40 zero, 08040 zero, zero, zero. okay i think that is it i'm going to copy that over to here just so that i can assemble that program without commenting all that or um messing it up all right so let's try that Let's see if that's what we get. If that's what we get, I will be pleased and uh, maybe even a little impressed with myself. Um, all right, let's see what we got. Now, temp one, let's see. Temp one is at 38 right here. That's close to what I said, isn't it? Zero, zero, 48 and 4 except I'm shifted interesting I'm shifted one byte off for some reason Well, let's see. Um, our code, the F1 code starts right here at 13.1a. This is where we jump to subroutines, so it starts right here. I don't want to walk through all these subroutines. Um, I think, actually, I think this monitor... Yeah, subroutines are treated as a single instruction, so we should, we should be okay on that. We don't have to actually walk through them, because those 
those are the ones that do so many loops we don't want to have to walk through all those loops just to see what this is doing all right so we got any brakes no team 1a okay we'll break out at the first point here in the f1 routine so let's check what's going on in the zero page right now all right we've saved oh 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 that's yeah okay i just put them in backwards i i put the one i put the one at the beginning instead of at the end i forgot about it we've got to remember that the sha algorithm is all big indian so we've got to our low bytes got to be on the right even though the lowness of the byte doesn't matter for these operations they don't carry over um, from byte to byte I still have to remember to, to have it in that order if I expect it to end up in that order um, so my mistake was back up here just setting it up um, I need to do it like this if I want the last byte on the right. If I want the total value to be 1, I've got to do it like that. Not put the 1 in the first byte, put the 1 in the last byte. So let's just try that to make sure that it works. That should, that should just flip it around. There's the answer we were looking for. 40080400. All right, so the F1 routine works. Um, now the question is, how is the F1, where do we want to put that value when it's done? Excuse me. Because we're probably going to clobber temp1 as soon as we go to do something else. So F1 gets used later on down here in one of these deals. Um, where is it? Right here. It gets used later on when we're creating T2. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we're okay not, not messing with that. Um, if we do F major, when we do well, F major is going to use, let's see, two locations do this and, and then it's, it'll save those into one. Two locations here. I think it's going to need at least three temp variables. Let's see, it'll need two right here, but then only one. And then two and then one and one yeah it can it, it'll only need three but it will need three so if it uses temp one temp two and temp three then f1 needs to store its thing somewhere else um because because then we'll have to add it to F major down here. Um, let's just do this. Let's create, instead of just another one called temp1, let's create F1 res for F1 result and let's put that up a little ways um, let's put it at 60 result of F1 calculation okay so we'll have that we can put it there then we're freeing up the temp variables we don't need to worry about them anymore so F1 then can do that as its last thing. It can load, let's see, we're gonna copy. So I'll just copy that. But instead of copying VA, we're gonna copy temp1 to F1 res. Did 
I call it that? Yes, I did. So we're going to load the source is temp1. The destination is F1 res. Four bytes, copy, good. All right. And those, I mean, these locations can move around later if we need to move them, if something's in a bad spot in the zero page or whatever. Um, that's fine. That's why you that's why you use labels in the first place so that we can do that kind of thing. But um, we'll just put it there for now. All right. So that is our F1 program or F1 function. That's the whole thing right there. Let's add another note. result in F1 res. All right. So that's one function. Now we need to look at the next function, F2. F2 is very similar, <clears throat> except that it starts with E, not A, and the rotations are different numbers, but otherwise I think we're going to be able to very much copy it. So let's see about that. I tend to put new, whatever I'm doing new, I tend to put above the last thing I did, like right now just copying that. Um, tend to put it up here. The E F2 will probably, we'll probably want an F2 res. Let's just go ahead and make that. Rotations 6, 11, and 7. Okay, so let's change that. 6, 11, and 7. So we're working with VE this time instead of VA. So let's just change that first of all. We're going to store it in F2 res. times the, the copies are the same. We're going to copy them into temp1 and then we'll copy the second one into temp2. <coughs> so that should all be good. So the, the thing that changes then are the times. So the first one we need to rotate six times. So this becomes six. The next time we want to rotate 11 times. So this becomes 11, which is B in hexadecimal. And then here we want to rotate left seven times, so this becomes seven. Okay, is that everything? Is that everything for our F2 function? Um, I guess the thing to do is going to be to test it. If we just do what we did before, except use F2, let's think about what it's going to do again. All right, get rid of this because we already tested that one. So we're going to start out with 00000001. Rotating it to the right six times is going to bring it around. see four times would be there so I believe that's going to be 04 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. think about whether that's right yeah because eight times would bring it around to one so that's that's rotating it right six times then we're going to take the original value again yeah, stop that rotate it right 11 times so that's going to come around eight and then four more would be a one here so just three more times would be a two so two zero 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 an exclusive or that with the first one 
you're going to get 04200000. Take the original, rotate it left seven times. That's going to give you 00000080. And once you exclusive or that, you're going to get 04200080. So that's what we're looking for this time. 420080. And we're going to test this. 420080. And it should end up in temp1 and then also copied to F2 res, which is going to be 64. All right. Let's try it. Uh, what did I say we were looking for? 40. I was looking for an 80 somewhere. There's the thing that it got cop or did it get copied? That'd be 60, not 64. What am I looking for here? Six four. Did I not save something? Or did I not call? No, jump subroutine F2. This is F2. We're working with VE. Oh, because I didn't store it in VE, dummy. There, we got to store our thing in VE because that's the one we want to test on. All right, try again. All right, and we stored our, let's see, E is at 2, 8, because this is A, B, C, D, E, so that's easy enough to figure out. This is E, and then we did all that stuff to it, stored the results into 6, 4, and I said we were looking for, is that what I said we were looking for? 4, 20, 0, 80. Yes. All right. So that one appears to work. All right. We're at 45 minutes. We're good. We still got some time to do some more of these functions. All right. Now, the next functions, F3 and F4, are a little more complicated because they can take any value. They don't. They don't always copy from a particular place. They're going to be copying from. Um, other places. In fact, they take values which are can be anywhere within the message schedule. And the message schedule, which we're calling WW, is not going to be in zero page. It's going to be off somewhere else because it won't fit in zero page. So we're going to need another we're going to need another function for that, another routine to copy from main memory into zero page. So let's come back to those. Let's do these up here first because they're simpler. We've already got all the components for these two. Um, so FCH works on E, F, and G and does this business. So let's copy that. put that there for now. So this will be zone FCH. Um, I mentioned last time the, the purpose of these zones is just to localize the um, to localize the labels which isn't even important for these because there aren't any labels in here. There's no looping. But if there were, um, it would be handy. All right. So to do this, we got to start breaking down what it's going to do. It needs to copy E to one of our temp variables and also copy F to one of them and then do an AND on them. So first of all, we got to get them copied. So let's do this. We'll copy, actually... So now I can look down here and, and see what I was doing before. So we're going to copy value E. 
we're going to we're going to copy that to temp1 load a with temp1 load x with the number of bytes jump subroutine f copy zz all right it might be that I should turn that into a macro. Um, you can do macros in this assembler. Um, I don't know if it would save that much though. I guess, I don't know, I'll have to look into that. So we copied that to temp, t to temp 1. Then let's copy F, because that's the other value we need, to temp 2. And now we need to end those two together. We, need to, we want to end together F1 and F, or we want to end together temp1 and temp2. So we've got to look at our documentation here again because we haven't used that one yet today. F and you give the first value in X and the second value in A. So it's just like the exclusive OR one that we were doing before. And it's just like this here. Um, So we want to load X. So yeah, X is the first one, A is the second one, and then we're just going to F AND instead of exclusive OR. All right, so now we've done this business right here and left the result into temp1. All right, now we need to do the not E. You just got to work on all these things inside out. So let's not E in temp2. We're done with temp2 because we've put the result of this into temp1. So we need to copy E to temp2. So let's just grab this. Temp2, temp2. All right, now we've copied it. Now we have to knot it. So to knot it, here's our knot routine. We just pass the zero page address in A and call F knot. So we're going to load A with temp2, which actually it already is, but um, no. Actually, well, we don't know. Sorry, it won't necessarily be because we're going to probably clobber that in the F copy routine. So load A with temp2, jump subroutine F0. Not so temp2 equals not temp2. All right. So now we've knotted that, and we need to end that with G. So we need to copy G into temp3 and and that together with temp2 leave the result in temp2 so let's grab this temp2 will be our first one and our destination for the for the answer so we'll do it like that and you could switch that around it doesn't it doesn't matter I'm just I'm always going to be moving them just just to be consistent I'm always going to use the lower one as the destination as where the result goes so now we have this right here e and f that's in temp one from up above in the first half of this function. And then this right here, not E and G, is in temp2. And so now we can exclusive or those two together, temp1 and temp2. Just like we've been doing so far in the other in the other routines. And then we're going to want to copy that whole thing somewhere. So let's have let's put the result in. Let's just have an an FCH res for this too. And so let's come down here and just steal this. Okay, so the source is temp one. The destination is FCH res four bytes, copy it, and then we just have to have an FCH res.
like I said, that we may not need these locations later. It'll depend on how these functions get used, but I have a feeling we will need them. Um, and of all the calculations we're doing here, copying four bytes from one zero page location to another isn't a isn't a very heavy task compared to all the rotating and stuff that's going on. So um, a few extra copies isn't going to break anything. Or it isn't going to make the difference as far as um, how well this works in the long run. Okay, so we've got our FCH function. So I guess we should test it. Um, to test it we need to put values at E, F, and G. So let's just get rid of this. We're not, we don't need to store things in temp anymore. We're letting the functions do that for us. So let's put a 1 in E. Um, and let's see. Let's put a 2 in F. And let's put a 4, just to keep one thing simple in G. All right. And then we'll jump to FCH and do all the things on it. All right. Now if we think about what that's going to do, let's come back to here where we've got kind of a scratch area. All right. If we're going to say E is 1 and F equals 2, and G equals 4. All right. E and F is going to be 3. And we're going to exclusive or that with not E. Okay, well, not E. That's that's going to complicate things because that's going to become um, F, 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 E, and G, which is 4. Um, now that's going to uncomplicate things pretty quickly because then that's just going to become 4, so we're going to have 3 exclusive or with 4. And that should leave us with 7, if I'm thinking right. We should end up with 7. Let's try it and find out. I went through that pretty quick. Um, uh, 18. All right. And where did I say? Oops. Where did we put the answer? 68 is FCH res. Ended up with 4. That's not what I was looking for. That's not what I was expecting. Um, let's see. Um, I think here. Let's make sure I set everything up right in the first place. Uh, let's see, E, F, and G are supposed to be 1, 2, and 4. E, F, and G are at 2, 8, 2, C, and 3, 0. There's 1, there's 2, and there's 4. Okay, those got, those are, those are correct. Alright, I said... E and F. No, sorry. Da, 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 da. That was dumb. One and two is zero. Okay, let's let's think about our boolean. This. Let's just leave it to one byte. There's one. There's two. When you and those, I was I was oring them in my head when I was saying and, or I, I was exclusive oring them in my head. 
But when you end those, the only ones that end up being ones are the ones where they're both ones, and so in this case, there are none of those, and so everything ends up zero. So this should be zero, and then exclusive ord with this, which is four, which is gonna be four. And I think that is what we got. Yeah, that's the, so we got the result of four. All right, so we've got FCH done. I'm not doing uh, the most extensive testing on this. I figure that'll come later when we get more of it built up and we can start putting some real real numbers through it. Um, I just want to make sure they basically work at this point. All right, now we have F major, which is similar to FCH. And so maybe we can do some major cutting and pasting here. Um, Let's take that. Let's just copy the whole thing for now. Mag zone puts results. We'll make a mag res. that okay all right this one is a bit different so we got to go through um, similar to the previous one we're going to and together two two things a and b so first we've got to copy a into temp one and then b into temp two and them all right and then that's going to be in temp one now we need to and a and c together this is where it gets a little different all right let's um let's take out this stuff in the middle all right so at the end we're going to copy to Madrez. Whatever we end up with, we'll be copying to Madrez. All right. So we've anded together temp one and temp two. That was A and B. It leaves the result in temp one. So now we need to copy A and C into temp two and temp three so that we can and them. So let's do that. I'm just going to copy this whole block. Copy A to temp two and C to temp three. And and them with temp two ending up the result. So now we have the result of A and B in temp one, the result of A and C in temp two. We can exclusive or those two together and leave them in temp one. So let's see, to do that, we load, or let's see, let's go down. Let's just find one where we've done that before. Yeah, so we want, yeah, we're going to exclusive or temp one and temp two, leaving the results in temp one. Now, we need to and B and C, so we've got to copy B and C into temp two and temp three. So once again, let's cut and paste. Uh, hold on a second, where am I at here? Here and here, okay. Here's where I need to start. We're gonna copy them into temp two and temp three and and those except this time it's B and C that's already C so the B C and them together leave the result in temp two by the way I need to correct 
this just to keep my comments correct. And then, once again, exclusive or temp2 with temp1. And then copy temp1 out to fmadres. Okay. Kind of rushing through that with a lot of copy and pasting rather than figuring it out step by step, but that's one of the advantages of the fact that these functions are all very similar, or some of them are similar to each other anyway. Um, okay, so we want to test that. We're going to need to, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to need to put our values in A, B, and C this time. Put one in A, two in B, and three or four, excuse me, four in C. And to plan out what this is going to do, it's going to say A, A is one, B is two, C is four. So it's going to say one and two exclusive or one one and four exclusive or two and four all right one and two is going to be zero one and four is going to be zero and two and four is going to be zero well we better not start with those numbers um that's not going to prove much um, we'll end up with zero but i I think we can do a little better than that. Let's make um, let's make a three and b seven um, and c twelve. I'm just kind of picking them out of my ass here. Um, So B, I said was 7, and then 12, okay. So 3, let's just, 3 again is 0, 0, 1, 1. And that was 7, which is 0, 1, 1, 1. You're going to get 3. So that's going to be 3, exclusive or with. Then, again, 3, exclusive or with 12. Well, this is 12. And so that's going to be 0, so exclusive or with 0. And then seven and twelve, that's gonna be that's gonna be seven. And twelve is gonna give you four. Exclusive or with four. And so our result should be seven. When you exclusive when you when you exclusive order these all together, three exclusive order with zero will be three, and then exclusive or that was it with four will be seven. So we should get seven. When we do this. All right, and it's going to put the result into 6C, so we should get a 7 in 6C. And we get 0. Oh, wait, I didn't change the numbers yet. I just... I talked about changing them, but I didn't actually change them. This is going to be 3, 7, and 12, which is C in hexadecimal. And there it is. There's our 7. All right. So Fmadge appears to work. All right. That brings us to the ones that are a little trickier. Um, well, and we're over an hour, so I'm going to break here. And that means when we come back, let's see. When we come back, we have to start by doing F3 and F4. Which means we need a, we need an F copy 
MZ routine and F copy ZM routine and F copy MM routine. Those are going to be, we'll write all those as routines that can copy a series of bytes from main, main memory to zero page, from zero page to main memory, and from one main memory location to another because those are going to be different. They're, they can't be like the zero page to zero page one because zero page addresses you can fit them you know you can fit the two addresses and the number of bytes you want to copy into your three registers you can't you're not going to be able to do that with main memory locations they're going to have to they'll have to be done a little differently won't be a big deal but they just they will be different so it's not something we can just copy and paste what we've got and change, make a couple changes it's going to have to be actually done differently so that'll be for next time we'll do those we'll do f3 and f4 and then we'll have all the functions to start building our bigger functions out from those like these down here where we use those you know the f the f functions where we use those to build these things so we're getting there we got several more hours to go i would say but we're getting there all right so that's it for this time if you have any comments questions um, suggestions or anything um, be sure to leave them in the comments or look me up on the uh, C128 subreddit. And thank you for watching.